Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we have a little bit of a special review. This is going to be my Hogmanay review for 2020-2021. So, um, yeah, nice to finally draw a close on 2020. Not the best of years with this whole COVID-19 pandemic and all this kind of thing. But, um, yeah, fingers crossed for a better 2021. So, until this whole pandemic thing blows over, stay safe you know, uh, wear the face masks, do the social distancing, all of this kind of thing. Just don't do anything silly when we're so close to the end of this uh, this whole kind of mess, actually. I'm really looking forward to this being done. But yeah, just stay safe, guys, until this is all done. But from the bottom of my heart, a huge thank you to all of you who've watched, subscribed, and whatever it is you've done for the channel over 2020, a massive thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm sure we'll have a really interesting 2021. Lots of interesting stuff planned, and I will update you guys very soon with another kind of channel message video. But a very happy new year to you guys when it comes and uh, yeah, I think we've got a very nice beer to round off 2020 with. And I've got another nice beer to kick off 2021 with tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. For this review then, we are going to return to a brewery who are fairly local to me here in central Scotland. We're going to go to uh, Kippen in Stirlingshire for this one and we're returning to Fallon Brewing Company who do some really interesting beers. So this one is called the Big Raspberry Dog Chew. It comes in at 10% ABV and they're describing it as a salted caramel and raspberry milk stout. So uh, yeah, this one I think should be a little bit of a beast. This one was brewed in collaboration with the Brew Dog Bar in Glasgow and the recipe is derived from their Chew Chew which is their 6% uh, sweet stout that they do which in my opinion is one of the kind of iconic beers of uh, the Scottish craft beer scene actually. So that's one that I would always recommend to people that are interested in Scottish craft beer. But yeah, this one I think should be a really nice variant of it. A big 10% Imperial Stout Beast this one and as I've told you in many videos before raspberries are one of the kind of quintessential components of Scottish desserts actually. So really looking forward to this one. I think this is a very nice way to sign off on what has been a shitty year through 2020 and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So let's see how we get on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fallon Brewing Company before. This is going to be the eighth one if I remember correctly and there will be more in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Fallon Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So Fallon Brewing Company was established by Paul Fallon and his wife Karen. Uh, that is of course where it takes its name from. But Paul is a former home brewer who turned professional like many tend to do. So they bought the brewery site back in 2012 and it's in the old engine shed part of the Kippen Railway Station near Stirling which is in the vicinity of the Fintry Hills and Gargunnock. Very scenic part of Stirlingshire and I would recommend that you go and check it out if you get the chance. Um, but the station closed in 1934 but it was one of the busiest on the 4th and Clyde Railway at one time because of the two local creameries, a sandstone quarry and a tile and brick factory. There was two manors nearby and various tourists that used to visit the area as well. So the Kippen Railway Station was quite busy once upon a time and because of that railway heritage there's a lot of kind of railway imagery when it comes to the names of these uh, different beers. You know, Choo Choo, uh, Platform C, uh, Main Line, you know, all of these names have a little bit of a kind of railway theme to them if you like. Um, but initially to reduce start-up costs and also to de determine what kind of brew kit they were going to buy, Paul initially brewed his beers under contract at traditional Scottish ales in Throsk, uh, which is now known as uh, the Black Wolf Brewery, and that's very close to me in uh, kind of close to Stirling as well, actually, in a little place called Throsk, which is east. 
of Stirling, if I remember rightly, probably getting that wrong. Um, but the first beers in their own brewery were produced there in April of 2014. Um, they continued to build the brewery over the next years, and over the course of 2016, they built a new brewery building to increase their capacity, and they installed a canning line in early 2017, and since then they've continued to just gradually scale up the infrastructure at the brewery. Um, but apparently all of the beers are vegetarian and vegan friendly, and the brewery these days is running off 100% green energy, which is pretty cool. Uh, but as of December 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 20 different beers according to Untapped, and uh, yeah, they are a pretty damn solid brewery in my experience. But uh, yeah, the beers that I would always recommend you try from these guys, it would be the Choo Choo that I mentioned earlier. This beer, of course, is derived from that one, and uh, also the Platform C is a really nice one too. I do need to get a hold of the Odyssey at some point, which is their blonde ale, and I would really like to try the uh, the main line as well. But the uh, the Pilsner that I reviewed in the last video for in the last video from these guys was really nice and authentic as well. So to be honest with you, I would say pick a style of beer that you enjoy, and when it comes to Fallon Brewing, you are going to get a pretty damn solid example of that style. But yeah, Choo Choo is probably the most iconic beer from these guys. If you want a good West Coast IPA, you can't go wrong with Platform C either in my experience. But uh, yeah, that's all we can really say about this brewery for the moment. So if you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. But at some stage I would like to get Paul Fallon on the, the channel and do a little Meet the Brewery segment with him actually. I think that would be quite fun. I really need to get a few of those filmed the next time I'm home in Scotland. Unfortunately, it's not possible this time because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic, but hopefully during my trips home in February or potentially in September, we can do a few things like this and get a few more uh, Meet the Brewery segments done because that is something that went down really well and a lot of people seemed to uh, to enjoy that actually, so we'll get that sorted in the future. But um, yeah, as I say, if you want to learn more, check out all those links in the description below, but let's get on to the actual tasting section of this beer then. So um, as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 10% Imperial Stout. It was brewed as a collab collaboration with Brewdog Glasgow as part of their collab fest. Uh, the hops in this one are East Kent Goldings and it's got a malt base of Maris Otter, Crystal, Flaked Oats and Carafa Special 3 along with adjuncts of Raspberry, Belgian Candy Syrup, Lactose and Sea Salt. So yeah, this one should be a little bit of a monster actually. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, this uh, this one says it was uh, packaged in November of 2020. So yeah, this is a fairly recent release actually, so quite happy about that. But um, yeah, as you can see with the artwork in this one, it is quite similar to the other ones that you're going to find from Fallon Brewing. You can see the outline of the, um, the Fintry Hills there, which is one of the signatures of Fallon Brewing. And there you can also see the... the um, the hot flower on this one as well actually which is pretty cool but yeah this kind of new pencil style artwork you can see in the um, in the sort of how would you say the foreground of the hills I guess you could say that's designed by uh, Zion Capassi who is a doctor but he's also a good friend of Paul Fallon so uh, yeah he designed the new kind of um, graphic artwork that's behind the, uh, the text on this one which is pretty cool so I have to say I do like that the new rebranded cans from Fallon Brewing are pretty damn nice I have to say and of course they've you know upgraded these to be the 440s rather than the 330s that they were before so yeah awesome awesome uh, but it says on the side here the big raspberry dog chew this one uh, based on our much loved choo choo this is its twisted imperial cousin first conceived with the help of Brewdog Glasgow this beer has a luxurious and decadent feel amplified by a generous squeeze of fresh raspberry resulting in a layered and complex big stout but uh, yeah should be pretty nice 4.4 UK units 10% uh, ABV this is a bit of a monster so I think this will be a really nice way to kind of sign off on 2020. So yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. Then Black Top canned this and this was another beer that I picked up from Valhalla's Goats through in Glasgow. Um, so yeah, this should be very very nice. We'll get it out and into the glass. So there we are. Alright then. So yeah, that should be enough just now. I'll save a wee bit for my dad to have a taste of in a little while. And uh, yeah, this should be enough for us to have a little look at just now. But um, yeah, I think this is pretty, a pretty nice looking beer. So as you can see and as you would kind of expect from an Imperial Stout, this one has poured a lovely 
dark ebony rosewood colour. You could see that when we poured it, it had about a third finger of a frothy, I would say a very light kind of beige head on this one, maybe medium beige light tan I guess we could say. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, there's a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but I mean overall it does look um, pretty damn nice actually, it looks like a very very nice beer. The head has faded away to be a very very kind of thin foamy layer, but it does have a fairly impressive foamy ring around the edge of the glass, but yeah one or two, uh, one or two little bubbles sticking towards the side there and a few big ones kind of going up. If we shine the light through this beer it does actually have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it when you put the light through it, but otherwise it is pretty much black as night, you know, black ebony kind of rosewood colour there, which is what you'd expect from a big imperial stout. It's holding its head fairly well compared to others that have had around 10%, so that is definitely something noteworthy about this beer. But uh, yeah, certainly looks the part this one. So yeah, nothing surprising in terms of its appearance. Let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this then. Really curious about this beer, as I said. Oh, <laughs> that is crazy, this one. Um, yeah, um, it's kind of odd, actually. When you take it in, it's you get the tartness of the raspberries right away with this one, but it really has um, a bit of that kind of licorice and sort of phenolic kind of thing going on underneath it. You really get, it's got Belgian candy syrup in it, and I mean straight away from that you get those kind of phenolic, like Belgian dubel type uh, elements coming out of this one. It's strange because I never find the quadrupels um, have, I never find that quadrupels have the uh, as big notes as these. The quadrupels always come across as a bit more sort of rounded and um, just juicy in a sense, but the dubels I always find you get a lot of phenolic kind of notes out of them, and you get that out of this beer, definitely. Um, so yeah, a lot of those big kind of cakey sort of phenolic um, notes out of this one, you know, those kind of fruity, you know, prunes, dates, and then just that kind of alcoholic like Christmas pudding sort of thing uh, coming out of this one. That's maybe what they're going for with this beer in fairness, you know, it's really got that kind of cakey Christmas puddingy and datey pruney sort of thing going on, it dried fruits and stuff. So yeah, that's really interesting, lots of phenol out of this beer for sure. But on top of that, you get, um, I want to say there's a bit of an almost licorice in this one. I forget the name of those sweets in, uh, in Sweden that we have, but you get these, they're like bat face things. One half of it's licorice, the other half of it's like raspberry. Um, and it, th this beer really reminds me of those sweets. I wish I could remember the Swedish name for them now, but um, it's gone right out of my head, but it really reminds me of those sweets in Sweden. I actually had a beer, I believe it was from uh, Morian Dagens or uh, Duck Pond, I forget which one of the two it was, but I had a sour beer that was based on these um, sweets. It was a raspberry and licorice sour. That's This beer really reminds me of that in a lot of ways. But yeah, you get those big juicy raspberries out of this one. You could be forgiven for thinking that there's like little bits of blackcurrant and blackberry underneath this uh, because of the phenol that's going on. But yeah, there's definitely a sort of licorice element to this one as well, um, which is quite interesting. Um, the aroma of this beer is pretty random actually, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's got a few like Belgian Dubel elements to it, it's a bit cakey. Um, you've got all those kind of licorice notes in there. It's a little bit, you know, phenolic dates, prunes and all of these things. And then you've just got the raspberries out of this one. It's quite an oily but still quite tart raspberry note that you're getting out of this beer. Um, you can definitely smell a bit of the saltiness in this one, which is quite interesting. And you also get those, uh, you also get quite a bit of the kind of treacle molasses sort of thing out of this beer. Um, so yeah, the one thing you want to remember about these beers is when it comes to the big imperial stouts like this, they're going to have like a five, six hour boil in them. That's how you get part of the colour out of the beer, of course. The colour is dependent on two things. One, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of boil. And when it comes to these big high alcohol beers, they're going to have, you know, five, six hour boils. The imperial stouts, the barley wines and, and things like this. So um, yeah, the aroma... Oh. So backing it out, giving myself a fright there. Um, but yeah, you can really smell that big, highly caramelised treacle molasses sort of thing underneath this as well. There's a good bit of chocolate to this one. I mean, one of the malts that's in this well, uh, well, you know, it's chocolate malt. I'm pretty sure. You know, there. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a bit. It's probably the carafa that's giving you that. Okay, come to think of it. But yeah, carafa will give you a bit of brown sugar, and it'll also give you a bit of chocolate as well. Actually, carafa is a trademarked malt of the uh, the Vireman. 
company in Bamberg in Franconia in uh, Bavaria in Germany. Um, I've been to their Malta reacts. It's very very cool. Would recommend that. But yeah, you get a bit of a kind of you do get a bit of a high cocoa chocolate out of this one. You know, a 70 80 percent cocoa chocolate. Lots of treacle in there, and it's just got a wee bit of that kind of you know almost well fired black malty kind of note to it as well. And again, that will be the carafa that's giving you that. But you have to really search for that um, for that kind of well-fired sort of thing. You can just smell a little bit of the dryness in this one if you take it in very deeply. There is a wee bit of that. On top of that you get the kind of cakey thing, that kind of alcoholic boozy sort of cakey quality out of it. Um, and then you know within that you get the phenolic notes that I was talking about, the treacle molasses and all of that. Um, so yeah I think we've covered the adjuncts and the, um, the kind of malty side of this beer fairly well to be honest with you but you can smell the smoothness out of this and I'm guessing that'll be the oats and uh, that'll be the kind of oaty character in this one I think it said it's got flaked oats in it yeah it does and um, so yeah you can really get that smoothness out of the, the oats in this one um, the hoppy side of things um, this one, um, you can pick out a little bit of earthiness in this one. There is a fair wee bit of floral character and you can get a little bit of a brightness out of the, out of the grassy qualities in this beer. I mean, this one, it says that it's packaged in November of 2020. So I am drinking this beer fairly fresh. So you will get quite a little bit of, um, you will still get quite a little bit of hoppy character out of this one. If you left this, say, until next Christmas, quite a bit of that will have dropped out. You will still get the fruits right enough. You will still get some of the fruits out of the goldings, these kind of goldings in here. But um, yeah, it's it, you, you you can feel a little bit of that floral aromaticity in the beer. So on the hoppy side of things, a little bit earthy and you can smell that it's that slightly darker English earthiness that it has. A little bit of floral aromaticity and then a wee bit of grassiness. And you've got some nice fruity characters in there. A bit of blackcurrant, as I say, a little bit of black, brighter blackberry. You've got some, you know, and you can really get that big juicy tart raspberry out of this one as well. And there's a few you know, sort of um, dates and prunes and stuff like that um, underneath this one. Maybe a little bit plummy and raisiny as well to an extent. But um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is very, very interesting. So take a little bit of time and just enjoy that. It definitely has a little bit of a kind of Belgian Dubel type vibe to it because of that Belgian candy sugar that's in here. I never would have thought that that was the kind of, um, that it was the sugar that played that much of a role. I thought it was always down to the kind of yeast to be honest with you when I think about Belgian Dubels. Not my favourite style of Belgian beer right enough. I prefer the Trippels, the Blondes and the Quads right enough. Uh, and of course the Flanders Reds. I love a good Flanders Red. But um, yeah, this is definitely, just on the aroma alone, you can tell this is going to be a really, really interesting beer. So take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. But um, yeah, I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So let's let's have a, a taste of this and see how we go. So this one is the, how do we say, the big raspberry dog chew, 10% ABV, a salted caramel and raspberry milk stout from Fallon Brewing Company in Kippen in Stirlingshire, quite close to my hometown of Stirling uh, in central Scotland, brewed in collaboration with Brewdog through in Glasgow. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanger, Skull, and a very happy 2021 to all of you guys. Thank you for your support over 2020. Stay safe. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Mmm. That's interesting, this one. Um, it's got a really first impression of it is it's got a really really silky mouthfeel and it's just almost like certain flavours you know it's almost like that kind of phenolic element of this beer it just floats right on the middle of your tongue and you've got all this oaty kind of smoothness and silkiness underneath that it's really strange but I like it I certainly do this beer's really got a very unusual way of bringing its flavours out but I think it works very very well actually so yeah this is pretty awesome so thumbs up to Fallon Brewing once again you can always rely on these guys to put out really solid and very interesting beers and this is no exception to that so yeah um, it really has that similar mouthfeel to it really has a very very similar mouthfeel to um, the Choo Choo, definitely. It's got that big, silky trademark um, of that that beer. But um, yeah, I really like 
I really like how this one goes together. What I would what I would say about this one is that I would love to see um, a version, just you know, just a, a straight up imperial version of Choo Choo. I would love to see them just do that, you know, without the candy sugar, without the raspberries. Um, I think that could that on its own would be a really interesting thing for them to do is just to make an imperial version of Choo Choo. Um, but this one certainly is. Um, it's really nice. So yeah, where do we start with this beer? The, the flavours, the, the way, this is a, a really quirky beer and the thing that makes it quirky is just the way these flavours come out. Um, so the first thing you're going to notice about this beer is that when you take it in, you've got a wee bit of an oiliness to it and you've got juicy but still quite tart raspberries. But in fairness, you do get some of that kind of phenolic quality coming out, that sort of Belgian Dubel type phenolic quality coming out of the beer from that Belgian candy sugar that's in this. That of course is a trick of the uh, the Belgian brewers um, to kind of up the alcohol of the beer but still keep the mouthfeel fairly slick or whatever. And you can get a bit of that in this beer to be honest. This is, in fairness, quite a slick Imperial Stout for 10%. It's definitely not the thickest that you're going to come across. It does almost feel as if it has the same consistency as Choo Choo in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, in that in that sense, I do wonder why have they taken the alcohol content up, or is that you know it was that the intention, or is that the result of using the, is that simply the result of using the the kind of candy sugar? Because this does have, um, the, the for a six percenter, this would have a really impressive, very very slick mouthfeel. For a ten percenter, in a way, it is just a wee touch on the light side of things, but that doesn't take away from the flavour, and the flavour of course is the main thing. But yeah. Um, for me, um, in the middle of your palate, in the middle third and the back third of your palate, particularly on the back, you can feel a little bit of that more roasty side of the carafa coming out and that sort of serves as the backbone of the beer. It does spread forward into that middle third of your tongue. Carafa, of course, is always going to have um, like a well-fired bread crust type quality and you can really feel that on that back third of your tongue and the middle third of your palate. Sitting on top of that, of course, you've got that nice, big, smooth, oaty um, kind of thing in there. The lactose, of course, is helping to smooth that out. So on top of that well-fired bread crust, you know, you've got the lactose and the, the oats just sorting that out. Um, in the middle of your palate, I think it's particularly noticeable in that middle third of your palate, you can feel the sort of salty um, notes kind of sitting in there as well. And then in the middle of that middle third of your palate, you can feel the sort of chocolatey qualities of this one. It does have a little bit of a kind of chocolatey note to it, but it's a very light chocolatey note, really it's more the oats, how do we say it, um, you could mistake this for chocolate, but I think it's more the oats and the lactose that are in this beer, just smoothening it out a little bit, and then the saltiness comes, you really get the saltiness into the aftertaste with this beer, but um, as I say, you might get the impression of a wee bit of a kind of 60%-ish cocoa chocolate, not madly dark, not milky, um, but you will get a wee bit of that just in the middle third of your palate there. Um, sitting on top of that you'll get a little bit of it, uh, you can feel there's almost just a circle there where you get those sort of phenolic kind of um, phenolic almost cakey type flavours from the um, from the Belgian candy sugar, you get a lot of that coming out of this beer for sure and that sits there in the middle of the palate as well so it's almost like yeah cara it's quite layers, you've got carafa and the well-fired bread crust underneath, then you've got the oats and the smooth lactose just sitting on top of that. Then in that middle third of your palate, you've got a circle. Bit of, um, you know, 60% cocoa chocolate. Then on top of that, you've got these cakey, like Christmas pudding-y type, cakey phenolic type flavours in there. Um, there is a wee bit of a sort of... You don't get too much in the way of brown sugar out of this one, I don't think. Um, not as much as I remember from the, the choo-choo right enough. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting point to make about this one. Um, does it have caramel in it? Does it say down here? It's got crystal, it says it's got crystal and maris otter in it, so yeah, that's kind of an interesting point there. You know, Car maris otter always gives you a nice kind of smooth breadiness and also like a bit of sweet caramel but quite biscuity and then crystal usually has a bit of a kind of biscuity caramel sort of thing to it as well. So yeah, I mean, in the very centre of your palate you are getting I, I, you can get a wee bit of a caramel, but it's not madly prominent, if that makes sense. And you do get a wee bit of the biscuitiness again as you push out towards the side of the palates there. So it, you've got a circle in the middle of your tongue. Um, you know, 60% cocoa chocolate, the phenolic cakey sort of thing. Then on top of that, you've got these, um, kind of, you've got a sweet caramel and then a little bit of biscuit as you move out 
towards the side of the palette there. So this is it's a really interesting. Um, it's really quite interesting how that goes together in this one, definitely. Mm. I would say they say this is derived from the the Choo Choo, but in a lot of ways it is quite different. But what you'll notice around the edge of that circle that I'm talking about, you get the saltiness out of the beer and you start to get a bit of a sort of licorice um, type flavour coming out of the beer. It sort of dries out and you get a bit of a licorice. It's, it's, Although it's not quite aniseed, it's just, just a bit more dry. You get a bit of dryness and saltiness out of this beer around that circle I was talking about as you go further into the aftertaste. So yeah, that's the main difference I would say with this beer is it's more, it's definitely very phenolic. Um, it's a very, very phenolic beer, this one. But I still like it. I do still quite like it. Um, yeah, um, so it's got that, yeah, it does have that, a bit of that kind of Cavonia cough syrupy medicinal type thing to it, but it works, it does work with the raspberries in fairness. But yeah, I think we've covered the, the sort of malty and adjuncty side of this beer uh, fairly well to an extent. So in the back corners of the palate, um, you do get a little bit of that slightly stronger earthiness, you do get a little bit of that, you know, English hop earthiness. I always found that English hop earthiness is just a little bit kind of harsher and stronger than German, for example, or American. But yeah, you get a wee bit of that Kent Golding sort of earthiness in there as you move further forward onto the uh, to the sides of the palate. You get more of a herbal quality out of the beer. Um, you also get a little bit of a floral aromaticity. And again, that's because this beer is pretty fresh. I mean, it's only been in the can about two months at maximum, six weeks, two months, something like that. So that will drop off if you store this beer a little bit longer, but definitely a little bit of floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate and round the front curve of the tongue, you can just get a little touch of um, of, uh, of grassiness out of this one, which is quite nice. One of the things that you will always get when you add fruit into a beer though, is that it suppresses a little bit of the green side of things. And you definitely get that in this beer. You can feel a very oily sort of raspberry flavor just sitting there on the um, on the kind of edge of the tongue there. So definitely you get the, the big oily raspberry qualities out of this one for sure. So yeah, you can always tell from the mouthfeel if fruit has been added into a beer. Of course, it's a big thing these days to use um, flavour essence uh, in, in a lot of beers. Uh, but you can tell straight away from the mouthfeel this one, it does have the, the kind of real deal in there. Some breweries as well use both regular fruit and a little bit of the flavour essence in there just to, you know, just to sort of round it off a little bit more. Um, but this one definitely doesn't do that. What you'll notice on this beer as well is that in that border region between middle third and front third of your palate, there is a very dark, almost like a well-fired burnt edge cake sort of thing. You really have a little bit of bitterness and harshness in that border area there. Um, but yeah, let's focus on that front third of your palate where you'll get the fruity, juicy esters there. Um, underneath all of those fruity, juicy esters, you get a bit more of that phenolic cough syrupy kind of character coming out of the beer. Um, but yeah. Mm. So on the hoppy side of things, then, as I always say, those fruity, juicy esters just roll their way out the beer. If you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, there's a wee bit of a kind of plummy note to it. And then as you move, kind of, as you move sort of further forward, you get a wee bit, there is a wee bit of a raisiny sharpness there, but then it starts to give way to those more kind of phenolic cough syrupy type esters. There's a wee bit of a kind of figgy type quality in there as well. And then as you reach the front half of that front third of your tongue, there's a little bit of a more black currenty blackberry sort of thing out of this one and you know that those are quite typical notes to get out of the East Kent um, Goldings. Um, I wonder if you know Bramling's Cross I think would have been a very interesting hop to use in this one because Bramling's Cross gives you even more kind of complexity to the fruitiness but the front of the third of your palate dries out a wee bit and you get more of that sort of phenolic type thing but you get the juice the, the tartness of the raspberries I think comes out a little bit more the further that you go into the aftertaste so yeah I think this one is def this this is a very very quirky beer I think, um, but I, I do like what it's doing. This one I do want I do wonder though might it, might it have been even better without the candy syrup? It might well have been to be honest with you. 
Um, but you know, it's this is what you get from from Fallon Brewing. You get very very quirky beers, and this one is really unusual because it is like a big imperial milk stout, but with just a bit of that Belgian Dubel type quality to it. And you know, you want these days. There's so many like hazy IPAs out there, so many pastry stouts. You do want things that are a little bit quirky and different, and that's what Fallon have given us here. They've given us a fairly kind of quite. They've given us a fairly quite quirky beer this one I think so I like it. I like the idea that they've gone with in this one but what I would say to them is do please do just a regular imperial version of Choo Choo I think that could be um, really interesting you know focus on the brown sugar side of things um, that would be a really interesting project for uh, for these guys I'd love to see them have a go at a scotch ale as well I don't think that's something that they've ever done I don't think they've ever done like a, you know a 90 or a 160 dare I say shilling so that would be an interesting project for uh, for Fallon going forward but yeah the, the fruity side of this beer the, the raspberries come across as a little bit dark because of the kind of cakey phenolic thing I think it's fair to describe that flavour underneath the front third of your palate as being quite cakey and phenolic as well but um, yeah I think we've described the flavour now now, pretty in depth um, and you always get beers like this that makes you think a little bit this is what I like about this one Fallon will give you beers that make you think a little bit but um, yeah let's move on to the mouthfeel then I would describe this beer as being um, you know this it's not the thickest of imperial stouts that you're going to come across but it's certainly got a very full body I'd say it's at the kind of bottom to mid uh, the mid uh, area of the spectrum when it comes to full bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. It's a very silky mouthfeel, this one, a very silky and very, very smooth mouthfeel. In terms of bitterness, I would say, you know, in terms of bitterness, it's quite, um, you know, it is, it is, in terms of bitterness, I think this has to be about 60 or 70 IBUs. There is a good little bit of bitterness to this one, but it does have a wee bit of that kind of herbal, licorice sort of thing. You do get that licorice dryness coming out of the beer later on, so the bitterness is quite hard to determine on this one, but I think it has to be at least 60 IBUs, this beer. It really does dry out a little bit, both from the carafa and the licorice side and the cakey sort of phenolic thing that it has going on for sure um, but there is a bit of sweetness to this one there is a wee bit of tartness it's not going to blow the head off you in terms of tartness either this one and um, yeah it's quite an interesting beer this but obviously the IBUs are going to drop the more that you age this beer but uh, yeah this has been a really interesting one to review lots of different variables to think about in this but um, again it's another very very solid beer from Fallon Brewing Company and that's what we've come to expect from them so yeah I think this is a really interesting one to sign off uh, to sign off 2020 with so thumbs up to them for that so if you get the chance to try this one have a go at it but for Fallon Brewing Company definitely do a, a kind of regular imperial version of the normal choo-choo I think that could be a very interesting thing for you guys but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one was the Big Raspberry Dog Chew just to make sure I give it its right name the Big Raspberry Dog Chew a salted caramel and raspberry milk stout coming in at 10% ABV from Fallon Brewing Company in Kippen in Stirlingshire, brewed in collaboration with the Brewdog Bar through in Glasgow. My tw my Hogmanay 2021, 2020s uh, last 2021 beer review for you guys. This was an interesting one. As I said earlier, a very happy new year to you guys, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. So thank you for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fallon Brewing Company as well. We will no doubt return to these guys sometime soon. Odyssey and Mainline are my next beers on the hit list from these guys. So fingers crossed we can review those fairly soon for you. But in the meantime, we had this one, Big Raspberry Dog Chew, 10% uh, Imperial uh, salted caramel and raspberry milk stout for, uh, to give it its properly full title from Fallon Brewing Company. Awesome stuff and it was nice to review this for you. So until the next time, Slanja just now, check out my social media, check out Fallon Brewing and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, cheers. <laughs>